In this episode of Hot Hardware's Two and a Half Geeks, we're live from New York with a couple of wicked smat guys from Intel and a whole lot of Core Ultra coming up next. Hey there, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware here with my compatriot, as always, Marco Cipetta. How's it going, everybody? We are in the uh, beautiful Big Apple today, and uh, we're with these fine gentlemen from Intel. And Hello, uh, we have uh, Robert Alec and, and Dan Rogers. Good to, good to have you with us again. Um, been a little while. Yep. Um, I think the last time we saw you was something like innovation or thereabouts. Was what, September? Uh, out west. Yeah, September. And um, since then, you've been a little busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a little busy. <laughs> Just a little busy. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's good to be here with you. We've got a bunch of technology on display here today. Um, why don't we start though with the humans in the room? Sure. Let's talk about um, a little bit about what you guys do at Intel. Your name, rank, and serial number, your positions, your your role, your purview, all that good stuff. Sure. Dan, why don't we start with you? Yeah, Dan, Dan Rogers. Uh, great to be back here with the, the internet today. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm a former Alder Raptor product manager, now managing our performance uh, marketing a lot here in the, the client group at Intel. Awesome. And uh, Robert? I'm Robert Halleck. Um, Awkwardly enough, former AMD for 12 years, <laughs> uh, but here now, and I ostensibly hired to do AI performance uh, marketing and analysis, but it has scope creep rapidly into all things performance and power. You're the AI guy too. Yeah. 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 And we'll have a little bit of AI today for sure. Um, absolutely uh, on the agenda, as well as some gaming, as well as some uh, serious performance per watt. Mm -hmm. demonstrations i think mm -hmm. um we're gonna have a ton of demos um but uh yeah um let's let's dig right in um let's talk about meteor lake the architecture real quick before we start firing up pixels and whatnot uh hopefully everybody's getting the the audio here we've got a, a, a pretty serious setup here in new york can we just talk about how like how we cobbled this together <laughs> <laughs> yeah we probably should <laughs> There's like two different stream platforms that had to fuse like Vegeta and Goku suddenly like, <laughs> like in the span of mere hours and uh, got a ton of laptops set up. We got demo set up. We got stream boxes. It's a real, yeah. real deal. We've got enough compute horsepower <laughs> yeah. in this room to probably run a data center at this yeah. point. But um, put a TV yeah. studio together. I think. Exactly. <laughs> and no time for a test stream. So if anything's wrong, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Uh, Phil, Phil S says, I see single, uh, Cinebench single thread running. Well, um, interestingly enough, true. Uh, yes, it, it is on a couple of these machines and there's going to be a lot more benchmarks. Uh, but let's talk about Meteor Lake core, uh, core ultra, the architecture. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess give us maybe the quick little 10,000 foot view on what you think, um, this brings to the market, um, for, for, for laptops. Fundamentally, I think it's a chip that just it's easy to do performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, Alder and Raptor uh, <laughs> made my life difficult in past years because they were a good, a good part. But I don't think Intel was really where it wanted to be on power. And so the challenge for Meteor Lake was getting all of that, <laughs> all of that performance into a a much more efficient envelope, and then at the same time making graphics twice as fast, done, by the way, we've delivered that, we'll talk about that, uh, bringing in AI with a dedicated NPU, redesigning the package, multiple processes, like, it is a huge sea change. It is nothing like the previous CPUs in every respect, but the high point is faster graphics, AI, uh, great CPU performance, like, like bona fide CPU performance, which is what we all care about, uh, in much lower power. Awesome. And ready for future workloads, right? NPU, yeah. Yeah. ready for the AI onslaught that's coming? Well, you know, the, the, the way we do it is uh, like the, the E cores and the P cores both, they have AI instructions, VNNI, mm -hmm. right? The GPU has DP4A, it can do AI. It's like 20 tops on its own. And then you've got the NPU, which is another, you know, 10 tops or so. And we can use and actively use all three of them on the part for AI workloads. Awesome. And all on their sort of separate islands or separate tiles okay. yeah. so that 
they're only engaged when they need to be. Yeah, like we have a <laughs> convenient diagram. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go figure, look at that. But you know, CPU, CPU cores are down here, right? You've got them on their own tile, and graphics is up top. Yep. And, Big uh, and then you've got like some of the graphic stuff is like pulled out and sprayed across the tiles. And then I can't remember where NPU is. I think it's over here. Yeah. But it's in, in its in own tile. Way. Yeah. In the SOC tile. And so like, you know, the, the point was to like split this chip up into the best process, the best die size, the best layout for what it is you are trying to do. And uh, it has paid dividends. And that's like, that's why we're here. We're going to talk about performance, go through power, but it's a great part, like fundamentally a great part. Yeah. So we, we, know, we know that uh, power efficiency and performance are interrelated concepts, right? Efficiency in a sense is performance. Right. Um, but to bring AI into a laptop, Right, that that not just is like uh, a critical factor; it's like the factor, right? Mm -hmm. So the NPU uh, introduced in in Meteor Lake is really all about delivering that uh, AI experience for those sustained cases efficiently. We'll show many cases today that are running on the GPU, and those are great performance cases. So the GPU has the super important role for your performance AI cases that are like the cases we know today on the CPU and the GPU, and then the NPU has the special role in that it's it's hyper optimized for sustained low power inference. Um, so the combination of all three give you this, um, you know, real robust AI PC processor, but also done very efficiently. Got it. Got it. And let's talk a little bit about, since we've got the GM of the, of the client group here, let's talk a little bit about um, devices themselves, what they might bring to the market in terms of AI experiential. Mm -hmm. I also had a question about Evo. What's the... Uh, you know, continuation of that in this case. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, I would like to go to like the, the heat map slide. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let me pull that up. All right, look, uh, we're going to start spicy here. Like, spicy. What, what, what does, what is Coral to bring? Okay. So yeah. all three companies now have an AI accelerator in their device, right? AMD has it, Qualcomm, we do. What is the difference? The difference is in what runs. So what you're seeing here, is like 30 different models and frameworks tested on int 8 workloads and FP16s. These are just data types in AI, Yeah. right? So int 8 is like LLM representative, stable diffusion representative, FP16 is typical content creation type stuff that you find in Adobe. And then we did it on like a per engine basis, CPU, GPU, NPU. Core Ultra has a 100% success rate in running this stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody else does. It was like underperforming or didn't run or performance fell from like kind of parity for raster or compute operations to suddenly it's one eighth or one tenth the performance of what it was before when you're running these AI workloads. Like that is the major difference. Like AI PCs are going to change PCs like forever. Every computer is going to have this from now on yep. forever. Yeah. And the difference is in doing the software work to avoid this stuff like it has to work for people hmm. it has to be seamless and it takes a crap ton of hard work on the engineering side to get a green row right <laughs> and that's the difference between yeah. the two companies like or the three companies like does it work or does it not that's a fundamental software question right that meteor lake core ultra is delivering on that clearly the other companies have a little work to do yeah yeah. So that's the difference. So tomorrow when we sort of kick off this this new era of, uh, of AI PC, you know, one of the natural questions, the way that Robert just described here is, well, how do we benchmark it, right? Right. And uh, what we found and what we believe is that um, really it's uh, you're, you're benchmarking or describing software, if not like the same as hardware, but more than the hardware, right? So as, as we were in our shop kind of with this, you know, reproduced uh, setup here in our, in our team in Santa Clara, mm -hmm. Um, we realized very quickly, like th this is really a this is really a software effort, right? You for sure you need the right hardware, right? For sure, right? Mm -hmm. So we're laying that down and bring that to market at scale with Meteorlic. Um, but if you don't have the right software strategy, right, you can't bring that hardware to life. And with AI, that's especially the case. Uh, like in GPU, but I would argue even more so in this new emerging field. Yeah, 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 it's a lot like benchmarking games, right? Instead <laughs> of like DirectX or OpenGL, now you've got frameworks, right? right. Instead of games, <clears throat> you've got models. You still got applications, okay? Uh, it's it's very gaming PC like, and as we all know from a gaming PC, if the the driver stack isn't there or the optimization wasn't done with the soft with the, the software company, the ISV, like it's it's a poor experience, right? We've seen that 
over and over in the graphic space. The same thing is true, the same type of efforts apply in the AI space. And think how hard all these graphics companies have worked to do yeah. 3D acceleration, right? We've all been in this business for you know, 20, yeah. 30 years. We've seen that struggle. The same is true of AI now. Yeah. And, and so having a large software organization to get it right, to do the optimization work, go fix the partnerships, get the co-engineering done, that is the make or break piece of AIPC. Yeah, yeah. You have to enable yeah. developers, and you got to be uh, tight with the folks at yes. Rendon. And yes, or else you get red stuff. X's. Or you get red X's. <laughs> yeah. I, that, it's, that's the truth of this. Yeah. So what are some of the use cases, though? Like, to, to date, there's been some limited AI use cases for mm -hmm. client PC. What do you guys see moving forward? How, how is this going to change? You just said, you know, every PC moving forward is going to have AI. How are things going to change in a year or two years out? Or what's what's the vision that you see at this point? I know it's the Wild West and it's tough to, to you know, sort of to guess here. But what do you think? It's going to come in waves. I think early on, kind of end of this year, first quarter next year, content creation apps are going to like wholesale change over to AI-based algorithms. Anything okay. that's like object detection, masking, object removal, yeah. the stuff that's really laborious because you have to like, erase individual pixels and stuff and i will just take care of that love that uh, yeah hate doing that <laughs> so much <laughs> oh, yeah. um, get to like middle of next year widespread digital assistance running on the pc yeah. like where did i meet this person what did we talk about what happened in this last meeting summarize it for me write this email for me that will be on like every business computer on the planet that yep. has new hardware so imagine that like just that writer's block of starting a blog or an article or a review or something. Like you could just lay out the points you want, hit boop, generate, and it's not in the cloud anymore. It's here on your device. Right, so right, you yeah. Just take care of it in your voice, and then you're just copy editing. Yeah. Uh, go a little further out. I think gaming will eventually take AI on um, text to voice for studios that can't uh, afford uh, voice actors or think of like flavor text and books and scrolls and maps in the game world, that kind of stuff. Like that's the path I see for AI. But, you know, get to get to like 2028 or something, honestly, like eight out of every 10 computers is going to have an AI accelerator. Yeah. Laptop, yeah. desktop, yeah. doesn't matter what budget, eight out of 10. Unbelievable. That's great stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, taking meeting notes. Right it's, there pain. There. it's a pain. Like yeah. the AI is a time saver. That's yeah. that's a, like it's so traditional in that it's just going to come into the workloads and apps that you already know. It just won't be using like conventional algorithms anymore. They're just going to convert to like AI algorithms instead. Yeah. So you'll you'll still be using Adobe Photoshop, right? It'll just be way faster than it was before because they can do the AI piece now. Like yeah. you won't have to clone out that dude in the background who ruined your beach shot you just select and delete like it's 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 this massive time saver that unless you really try it it's hard to convey how much time you can save with AI. yeah yeah dan what about the evo experience is that is that being evolved even yeah, more? <laughs> it, it, it for sure is i mean you just you know to connect back to the hardware side right yeah. with, the, with the laptops we're building like uh, tomorrow is a is a major day for us because we'll be announcing um, you know the, the the vast array of, uh, of Meteor Lake uh, mm -hmm. Core Ultra systems, uh, many of which are Evo systems, and you know, coming to market. And that's what we mean when we talk about hardware scale. Um, but uh, what we're in, in an interesting sense, right? It's also it's also kind of the beginning. Right, so it's in, in, in one sense at the end because of the teams that have been working really hard at Intel for, <laughs> yeah, like, for a long time. time. So you know, it's, in some sense, it's a celebration. It's the completion of this hardware journey that we're on. And then we start to scale that out. But really, for software, it's really kind of the beginning. Yeah. Right? So we're we're really proud of the pipeline that we've been working on. Here we're sharing, you know, some of the familiar ISVs, as Robert mentioned. Like these these are things that people are doing every day on their PC today, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it won't be something that's foreign to you or, or alien to you. It'll be things that you're doing today, just made much better uh, by the, uh, the the development of AI features. Um, but for us, it's it's really kind of the beginning of this of this big software effort. Yeah. And uh, we've done a ton of work to get to this point, but then we're also super excited about what's to come. So that'll be a, a big part of our story. And you'll hear us talking more and more about that throughout next year. 
Cool, cool. Uh, we did get a couple of questions that came sure. in from the chat that we'll just add, and then we'll go to demos pretty soon, I think. But what about Thunderbolt 5? Do these Meteor Lake laptops have Thunderbolt 5 at this point, or are we still they, Thunderbolt 4? <clears throat> we are we are integrated 4. Um, okay. So we have uh, 4 Thunderbolt 4. Um, we call it a, um, Type-C subsystems uh, integrated uh, internally. So we have yeah. we have four of those uh, integrated yeah. um, in the chip and pinned out, um, balled out. And then we also support, uh, we have a discrete um, vulnerable chip, which yeah. is yep. you know now ramping into uh, endpoint devices, uh, monitors, box, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, we'll be present in, in future Intel mm -hmm. laptops as well. And then we have a plan to integrate you know, down the road. Uh, sure. Five technology well, I think that's, that's, got that's it. a point, like Thunderbolt 5 in this product kind of like, co-development at the same time like you can't yeah. integrate something that's being developed at this right time. yeah it's a little early like, yeah. but, you know in the fullness of time yes it's possible right sure companion cards companion controllers etc et got it got it now, i'm going to save dave from scrolling with some questions that were very early oh, thank um, you and they're they're super easy <laughs> um so well, so, easy so victor m was asking uh, initially um how can we expect meteor lake laptops to handle multiple 4k screens uh, I think it has four display controllers. Yeah, four sure. simultaneous 4K. Dang. Actually, it could even do, I think, 8K. Like, I'd have to go check my spec sheet, but at least, at least three 8K, 60, pretty sure, maybe four. And roughly in terms of performance, I know it's been said about 2X existing designs, right, in terms of performance? The uh, GPU? For, for graphics? Yes, or, graphics. Yeah. Uh, so graphics, like, I, we could, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this. Um, so... You take ARC, discrete ARC, right? That yep. debuted about 18 months ago, two years ago, like right after Alder Lake in March of that year. So that would have been 21. And now that IP is now in this part. It depends on what you're looking at, but like it's somewhere at 1.5 to 2X, depending on the game, just mm -hmm. gen over gen. So take Raptor, 28 watts, take Meteor, same power, 28 watts. We're talking 50 to 100% more graphics performance here. Wow. Um, I I will even go out on a limb and and say like by a hair it is the fastest graphics core in this space, which uh, you know I know is bold of Intel to say like we've never been yes. able to say that before but yeah. like <clears throat> yes we have the fastest graphics core right now. And what about in terms of media capabilities, right? So there's you know graphics, but then the media engine is fairly advanced. Like whatever there, right? you want, like yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, there we go. There you go. <laughs> Boom. AV1, DP9, encode, decode. You can do AK. You can do 10 bits per color. Like pick a codec, pick a resolution. You yeah, can do it. It, it, it's more than just a, a marketing uh, description, right? It, it truly is uh, the integration of the full discrete the full stack, class yeah. feature set. Yeah, uh, not just performance, but that full feature set, 2D mm -hmm. and 3D. Uh, into this tile in Meteor Lake uh, to give you a yeah. uh, really you know rich uh, rich feature set. Well, that's a good point. Like that's AI upscaling, that's AI acceleration, that's yeah. display, that's multimedia. Like you get all of that, not just the graphics core. Yeah, I mean, there's a yeah. lot going on, and it's sprayed throughout the chip actually because of the tiling system. Yeah, we we disaggregated. Uh, we wanted to locate some of the media functions, of course, in uh, lower voltage planes than where we would have the the big. You know, beefy 3D engine, and yeah. just to make sure your video playback cases, and we'll, we'll share some of this data, I'm sure, as we go, but make sure your video playback cases really are nice and low power, and then you're not sacrificing, of course, when you jump to the... Yeah, you're not firing cases. up a big graphics engine to yeah. run the display. So these right. things are going to crush our, our video rundown benchmark tests at... Yeah, high exactly. High. Yeah, Basically, is what you're saying. Time, time yeah. to change the battery <laughs> rundown tests. Uh, yeah. Like, okay, some of them more strenuous. Take, take ISO... ISO battery, right? Same battery capacity, yeah. normalized for battery capacity, normalized for hardware, so roughly the same. Yep. Like in a video case, it's like 30, 35% more runtime. Beautiful. Nice. Video. Beautiful. Like uh, same for, um, and that's true of both streamed video, like <clears throat> Netflix with Wi Fi enabled. It's true of 8K, 4K, local playback. It's true of, you know, kind of whatever video. I think over time, video rundown has always been a story of asterisk. It's like, well, local, but not streaming. Right. Right. It's it's just video. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's pretty cool. And office type stuff has similar gains. Cool. Yeah, so we we wanted to share here with the the, the internet with the world, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of a um, a more rich description of how power looks on Meteor Lake. Yeah. Because for the first time, we're introducing this third tier of hybrid. This uh, low, we call it a low power island, low power E4 island. Yep. 
Uh, so we have uh, performance cores, efficient cores for largely for multi-thread performance, and then now this additional two cores on a really low voltage state uh, mm -hmm. to handle those exact uh, video playback cases. And so we were really curious kind of in our lab, like, hey, how does this all work, right? So we, we wanted to share a walk of, okay, how does Raptor Lake look on power? Mm -hmm. Meteor Lake without that island, how does that look? And you can see some of the more general SOC and process benefits of Intel 4 and the new cores. And then now you see the with the low power island turned on, that additional level of benefit that we're getting from that technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at early days, so in some of your, your benchmarking, you'll see various levels of residence within that low power island. And we do a lot of software work, as you know, with Microsoft to make sure that's well optimized. Mm -hmm. You're not paying any performance penalties, so there's no strange behavior. Um, but we're just kind of getting going with that technology. And over time, we'll be more and more mature with that. Our hope is that in the future, in future architectures, we actually contain all of these battery life cases to just that low power island. Mm -hmm. um, but we're really happy with where we are to start with Meteor Lake is our, our first attempt at it. Uh, we see the results are pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. and just to put that in context for uh, folks who haven't studied the architecture diagram, we, we put CPU cores on the same tile as like USB controllers. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that's, that's Which is usually the, yeah. the, the previous gen right. process. Yeah, it's previous gen process. But like, workhorse. Clear, clearly, yeah. you know, like light blue is uh, Core Ultra, Meteor Lake with without those cores turned on. So, you know, we get a pretty, yep. pretty healthy gain. But then once you turn those cores on, all this traditional like low power or background parasitic battery drain stuff, it just snaps to these cores with pretty high residency. And you get, you know, you shave, you know, a fifth off of web browsing, you shave a quarter off of video playback. Like these are the nuts and bolts experiences that kind of define people's battery life. Yeah. And we're shaving huge chunks of power off of those use cases. Love it. Love and, it. And th these things are hard to do. Yeah, right. so, that's the hard uh, part. Like, uh, you know, uh, we, we spend a ton of time. Um, you, you, you've met Raj Shree, right? One of our principals uh, yeah. in, in software and power optimization. And uh, she, she essentially sort of co-architected this low power island approach. Mm -hmm. And there's a really robust set of software that goes into make to make that all run. And you can see when we compare to our competition, like the benefits of all of that investment, right? So that, that sophisticated infrastructure of hardware and software working with Microsoft, mm -hmm. we're able to extend that from the benefits you saw on the performance side with Alden Raptor into the power side with Meteor Lake. And yeah. we think it puts us in a really competitive position. I, I wanna stress here, like I, I think a lot of power measurement that people do is they just kind of, they take a per, per watt perspective, which is like load up Cinebench NT or something, right? right? Which necessarily maxes out the package power of the part right so you can measure per, per watt but you're not really measuring like energy efficiency hurry up and get idle right you're, <laughs> yeah, you're not measuring the stuff that people typically do which is like i'm reading an email at a desktop my right. system is on i'm at the desktop but i'm not touching with it touching it i'm not interacting with it that's the stuff that people spend most of the time yeah. doing so like when we look at competitive power where it's like this is this is someone these two numbers here it's like someone at the desktop right windows just sitting kind of idle you're reading a web page you're reading a document whatever we shaved 79 percent competitively off of that that use case like think about the impact that has to final battery life when you right. can just chop huge chunks off the competitive power consumption hmm. good stuff good stuff do we want to kick we into some, some demos? demos yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. What do we got? <clears throat> Mike? Cinebench, single thread completed. Can okay. you put it side by side? Can yes, I can put it side by side. side. I'm going to add it right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, you know, it's a little bit of context setting here. Like, what I, I want to be very transparent with the audience. Like, we, we shopped around to find, the, frankly, the best Wizen system. But okay. We ended up on a 16-inch uh, Lenovo system, which it's all on screen, right? But it's yeah. a 16-inch Lenovo system. It's the most performant mm -hmm. system we could find. Right. And then we're like, okay, what in Intel's portfolio is comparable from, from a form factor point of view, from an SOC power? So we're kind of like ISO power consumption. And net-net, like we're, we're producing more single core performance out of this part. Right. Uh, and I think, you know, us nerds who have been in this for a long time, we still come back to single core performance as like a hallmark of, of engineering prowess and and capability. And, you know, Intel 4 and these cores, faster single core. There you go. 
kind of like you can go run it when Cinebench is, uh, or when the systems are available. And then I think we're firing up what NT now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going through NT here. Oh, this is a more interesting case because now you're at. Well, while it's running, put us up on the screen. Yeah. This way we're not watching Cinebench for seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, that's I true. spent a lot of time in my life watching Cinebench. <laughs> um, but you know the the other the other measurement of performance is like okay now you're at maximum power consumption right both of these chips are about uh, 30 watts in these systems and um, and now you're consuming all that wattage to do of NT workload right yeah and what you're also going to see is we get more performance out of that case too a because we have more cores in the package we were able to do that with Intel four with this disaggregated design. And also because we deliver more performance per core, net net, of course you get more NT. So single thread and device compute, you come out ahead. Hmm. And we're really proud of that. You know, we so we're showing the lower device power in the sedate office cases yep. that define our world for battery, and more performance at full power. So we have the best of both worlds in this product. So some nuts and bolts stuff while this is running yeah. in, in a, in a multi-threaded workload like this, are the cores in the low power island being used right now or they're, they, they are, they could, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they are. So, um, wow. we, we schedule, um, in Alder Lake and Raptor Lake, we actually did the schedule the other way around. We scheduled some performance first, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that those E cores were there to sort of boost up your multi-threaded performance when you need it. In Meteor Lake, we changed the scheduling around. So we're now scheduling, uh, E cores first. So where we can contain those workloads, so the lower power cores, we'll do that. Uh, and then we will promote up from there. It's almost like cache, like L1, L2, L3. Yeah, and in the multi-threaded case, uh, where those uh, those those LP island cores are beneficial, we turn them on. And in some cases, you actually get some some overhead of those cores. So you actually want to shut them off because yeah, you're right. more performant with them off. So uh, all of that arrangement is happening between thread director and the operating system to keep you performant. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say it's a little bit of massaging of thread director going on Correct. there before you yeah, should be sure. And yeah. and it you know continues to develop, right? We're we're constantly tweaking it and learning and we encounter cases, oh geez, you know, it'd be better if we did this or that, if we turned it on, turned it off. So we're keep kind of mm -hmm. tuning it up. Uh, so the the software keeps getting better and better for those uh those cases. Well that's an interesting point. Like I think a lot has been said over the last couple of years about like OS scheduling of, of threads and stuff. And like the processor just has the hardware to do that itself in concert with the OS, right? So if, if you're like new to Intel, new to these hybrid architectures, we have that feature thread director that you know controls its own destiny on where those threads end up. And, you know, in cases where a large number of cores actually doesn't help you, some apps kind of freak out when you have a large number of cores, yeah. just turn them off, right? Yeah. And, and that, you know, these cases where this weirdness could happen, Thread director solves that problem. Yeah, and we we introduced uh, with a uh, 14th gen desktop a, a driver to help do some of that performance mm -hmm. optimization at the software level uh, above the operating system for um, or within the operating system in a sense of for yeah. for gaming cases. Uh, but the power of thread director is this is all happening you know below the operating system right. or like with the operating system between the hardware. So yeah. um, the user doesn't necessarily need to go and, and play with all that or even understand it. It'll just it'll optimize for you. Yeah, of course, it. if you choose to go in uh, park cores and do those things, like yeah, you'll not have that. But uh, <laughs> you know, but but most of the time, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for these uh, power performance optimizations, you'd like that to be done autonomously. Got it. Got it. Um, just, just to comment too on comparison points, because I think it's it's an important new thing that everyone will see with Core Ultra and Meteor Lake, which is um, yeah. we've kind of simplified the way that we're talking about the parts now. Uh, so we have a new brand, uh, Intel Core Ultra. So all of our Meteor Lakes will be Core Ultra. All Core Ultra is Meteor Lake. They all have an MPU. They all have AI. So pretty simple. Top to bottom, same feature um, set. And we also simplified our, our alphabet uh, descriptions as well. So uh, we have a, an H series that we use at 28 watt. We have a U series that we use at 15 watt. The H series is based on our, our larger die, our six plus eight die, okay. we call it internally. And then we have a U series for our, our smaller die, lower power, two plus eight die, similar to Alder and Raptor. And then we have a, a single 45 watt SKU uh, Ultra 9 that will be used in gaming and creator systems with uh, largely with discrete graphics. Got it. So no P series in between though. No, no okay. P series, pretty simple setup. Um, so H for the 6.8 and U for the 2.8. So here we're, we're doing more of a 28 watt um, sort of performance than in light category here. Uh, 
uh, compared 16 inch to 16 inch. Yeah, that, that's worth pointing out. Like, I know that says U, but that's a 30 watt SOC. And I know that says H, but that's also a 30 ish watt SOC. Just so, you know, we're all on the same page here yeah. about what's happening. Yeah, let me see if we can. Um, for, for everyone asking performance questions in the chat, um, these are live running on the machines in front of us yeah, right now. These. So if you're asking which one's faster, you're going to see the results live. And this isn't the only performance demo. We have other stuff. So stay tuned. I'm not going to interrupt them with specific questions because you're going to see mm -hmm. as the uh, as yeah. the stream we'll, unfolds. We'll do some gaming. <laughs> we'll do some uh, some graphics. We'll do some AI. We'll, we have a little game show lined up. Oh, fun. yeah. Games. <laughs> wow, I love games. Who doesn't? Uh, uh, did we finish up yet? Or are we still running almost there? Like we, almost. almost. There. We're getting there. Calculating. It's uh, yeah, still doing its thing. Mm -hmm. It's done. Yeah, you don't see the full picture. Oh, squares on the bottom. Last tile. Last oh, tile okay. Last tile's running. running. Okay. Yeah. Tile is my new favorite word. Meteor Lake. <laughs> Meteor Lake finished. So yeah, if you're watching Meteor live, the Meteor Lake finished already. <laughs> yeah. Score nine twenty two, and. Uh, Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it's awkward. awkward in a way that you like, I assume. Yes, yeah. this is an awkward awkward. Doing it live. Yeah, this is part of doing it live, right? Like so, we're benchmarking live, multi thread, like this happens. Yeah, yeah, while that's running, I'm going to ask Dan a question just to build on his previous yes. um, chat here. Um, how are partners going to segment machines? Like, are you going to see? Um, the same sort of like with the previous gen you had core i3 i5 i7 i9 kind of across all different form factors right i mean i9s were obviously much bigger form factors kind of similar segmentation with mirror lake in the core ultra yeah I, I think about maybe a few levels of hierarchy right so for, first is that we just want to be really clear with the market that aipc core ultra meteor lake same, right yeah same. no no uh, no confusion there right very simple so we're shipping a whole variety of architectures into the market, right? There's still some, you know, Raptor Lake systems. There are 14th gen desktops. So we wanna have real, just very simple, uh, Core Ultra is Meteor Lake. Uh, so that's, I would say, where it starts. Uh, and then we use the letter to denote the, the power level and the core count and the capabilities of the, the chip as well as oftentimes the system. Right. Uh, so that's our U and H. And then within that, we have different bins of core and graphics that you can select from which is the uh, Ultra 5, Ultra 7, Ultra 9. Yeah, still 3579. Okay. Okay. And that's generally been on the uh, the CPU and the GPU, as folks have traditionally understood from Intel, no mm -hmm. major changes there. Uh, we provide the the full uh, media display, the full mm -hmm. I.O., uh, the full NPU. So on all those other uh, platform and other aspects, we want to make sure that Ultra is feature rich mm -hmm. as it can be, no matter which version you're buying. Hey, we're done, finally. We're done. We'll go back yeah. to the screen now. All right, so we got 922 versus 729. So that's, uh, I don't know, that's another 200 points. So we'll take it. Pretty, pretty spicy. <laughs> every every point hard earned on that one. And Mike, we can show this other chart too, that you think, you know, pairs nicely mm -hmm. with this uh, real time demo. So um, this one we're not doing live. So this will take a considerably uh, longer uh, period of time to run. Yes. Um, but this is, uh, this is spec. Uh, running uh, with uh, Qualcomm, with uh, AMD, as well as the two Intel configurations. Yep. And you can see a similar result uh, that we believe uh, mm -hmm. ISO power, uh, we're, uh, we're winning on the, the multi-threaded uh, metrics. Mm -hmm. um, this is done with our Intel reference board, so yeah, we didn't drive the whole board in here today, but just again, to provide uh, some additional context uh, for the audience. A little yep. bit of legalese here. It's an estimated spec rate. There's requirements about spec disclosures. It's an estimated rate. Yeah. It's NT, it's spec 2017. Uh, it is end copy, right? So we're talking multi-thread spec reading here to there you go. This. Well, connecting back to the architecture, uh, <laughs> Redwood Cove, uh, which is our core code name within uh, Meteor Lake, it has similar IPC. So it's similar IPC to what you had in, in Alder Raptor, uh, but here we're able to deliver increased uh, multi-thread performance largely through efficiency, so a little better frequency of power, and also some IPC advantages in the E cores as well, this generation. Well, not, not cool. only that, like you're able to, um, crush down kind of like a call parasitic SOC power by reconfiguring into this tile. You can have like fundamentally things less active because you're, you have them broken out into blocks that can be turned off now. So that increases the headroom that you can put towards delivering more performance out of a CPU, even though they kind of have like similar IPC generationally, you can squeeze, squeeze more out of the stone because yeah. everything else is turned down. Yeah. That's one of the big benefits of disaggregated, not just like, cost in manufacturing but like the the net benefit to you is we can stuff more into the chip and squeeze more out of it that, that's the beauty got it 
Uh, had a question come in from Tyler. I don't know if he can answer this or not. It might be a little fuzzy, but uh, roughly speaking, how many watts does the uh, low power island use alone? I don't, I don't actually know. I have well, to maybe it's peak envelope. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's a great question. Um, we should it's, go uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty small. The, the frequencies are quite constrained. We, we'll, we'll put a note and we'll follow up with the exact specs. Okay. Um, but the, the frequencies are, are quite constrained because it's a fairly low voltage. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, uh, VMAX on that particular plane mm -hmm. that those cores reside in. Um, and, you know, we're building that out from there, right? So in the future, we'll have uh, uh, further investment in that approach. We think we'll be uh, even further our, our leadership on the power front. Well, well, let's, cool. let's commit. I think we can do at CES, like we'll, we'll come back and get those measurements. And wow. uh, we've got some cool stuff lined up. Like we're going to bring like instrumented power wires going everywhere. Y'all be able to have a <laughs> chance to play around with that. So we'll like, We'll just go get it live. We'll get the power. Measure. So this is an ask and you shall receive ask kind of thing. Ask and you shall receive. We'll do it. Awesome. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, uh, Mike is telling us that 3D Mark is running Ooh, now. We some graphics. We can talk about graphics. So we can shift to graphics and gaming. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to put it up on screen too so folks can see it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the meta point here, like, I, I, I would humbly submit, um, you know, in, Intel has not been in the driver's seat on on this class of graphics i think that's fair to say uh and i think this is something the team is tremendously proud of like we understand that this like this is not a gaming form factor piece acknowledged understood yeah but having an incredibly performant gpu still allows the one system that someone has to i don't know play a game <laughs> uh also because of the way we're architected software wise it's also an ai accelerator too that's an important piece of this. It is not just a gaming machine. It is also the AI machine. Right. And and so like by a hair, we're talking five to 10% here versus the fastest next best. Yeah, we're, we're ahead in gaming, right? And uh, we're extremely proud of that. And that's been hard effort. Like that's been years in the making to get to this point. Like Intel has the fastest graphics. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So the arc, arc core on yeah. board, yeah. what kind of vintage is that? <clears throat> Or derivative, I guess. Uh, that's uh, whatever vintage is the current discrete yeah, scaled scaled down. That's yeah, I know that. It's yeah, Alchemist. Alchemist. That's right. Alchemist. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Plus all of the the features therein, driver wise and hardware wise. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if you can roughly equate that to a you know a you know a performance envelope on the desktop like a uh, three I, series of five. I honestly haven't. Okay. I don't know. It's integrated, but. It's performance. Got it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and we're not we're not expecting it to um, you know to replace uh, you know much of what today is a gaming notebook. Yeah, it's not, not no, exactly that's not the, the position. Yeah. Understood. Um, but in this uh, in this thin and light category, around you know twenty five watts, and and you know in this area, uh, we, we think it'll be really pretty solid performance. Mm -hmm. um, and you know one of the, one of the benefits of the the Arc uh, integration is not just the, the of course the IP itself. And the literal integration, but it's also all the benefits of the, the team, the work the team's done on the driver stack mm -hmm. uh, and optimizing the different uh, gameplay per title. Uh, this has been really beneficial for the Meteor Lake program in a way that Intel hasn't had that in the past when we were in the discrete game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so having that, you know, that that entrance into that space, it's really helped uh, Meteor Lake considerably. And we'll show, you know, here we'll get the performance out here in a second, but uh, once this uh, Ryzen finishes up, um, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll show here in a second how that plays out across a wide range of titles. I, th I think that, you know, the meta point here is like all these companies running around talking about AI, Intel included, like <laughs> we're not, <laughs> we're, we're guilty. Uh, but I, I think some of the fundamentals of CPU design are always true. Like people care about good CPU core performance. People care about good graphics performance. People care about good power. These are just like good hygiene things to do in CPU design. And they raise all boats, AI included. Yep. And that's what this product delivers. Excellence in every one of those categories. Plus you slap in AI on top. Like that's not bad. Like that's that's a win in every dimension you look at. And that's why you know, that's why we're here. That's why we're talking. Like this is an excellent, excellent CPU from just like a, a disciplined point of view. Balanced. Yeah. So we got scores. What there you go. Looking at 3,800 versus 3,100-ish. Yep. So like I said, buy a hair, but a win's a win, and I'm going to take it. 
That's not a hair. That's 800 points. That's, that's uh, <laughs> let me do the math. That's, you, and me, you and me both. That's, uh, <laughs> that's over 20% if I do the math correctly. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty good. And so, yeah. And these are 16-inch form factors, folks. So there's Lenovo T16 and the MS Diac Prestige, which is also a 16-inch yeah. machine. And, and again, just like both SOC power, chip power, same. Yeah. Right? So we're not playing any funny business about this wattage up here, wattage down there. These are the same power consumption CPUs. And same memory speed. And these are machines people will be able to buy. if they. I mean, obviously, you can that already buy the Lenovo. That yep. is correct. Awesome. All right. Do we want to move to the next one, or is Mike not ready with the next one? Uh, it'll be like two minutes. Do you want to talk about the slide? Or we can talk about just gaming and, gaming and streaming. <laughs> yeah, we can do gaming and streaming. Uh, this, is, yeah, yeah. this is actually a case that combines like gpu and npu all at the same time so all right so what we got here is we got uh this is f1 2023 and uh dave like uh has been it, it's it's live it's right here <laughs> it's live it's right. live and uh, and memorex yeah, yeah. so like, you see this all the time on twitch right like someone cut out in the corner on a game stream right and typically that would be uh gpu assisted or cpu assisted right and those algorithms are yeah, okay, especially if you don't have a green screen or something to facilitate. And also the problem is it sucks performance to yeah. do it on the CPU and GPU. Yeah. So now we're doing this cutout business of Dave with the NPU. And so now you get that performance back for graphics and CPU, and you can just go stream. And this is like live 1080p uh, streaming to, to Twitch or YouTube. And, and this, this is like a use case where an NPU makes a, a benefit in a very traditional bread and butter sort of use case. And, you know, you get a performance uptick from this. So yeah. it's also doing live encode on the CPU. So it's kind of like an all engine capability. Folks, you might be noticing how the stream got fuzzy there for a minute. That's actually bandwidth and StreamYard believe it or not, that are doing that. And this is the actual quality you're seeing now. Mm -hmm. It cleaned up quite a bit. Switching between cameras took some bandwidth there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, one thing I don't like about this is that um, the uh, background replacement is also replacing what a little hair I have on my head. Just go all the way. <laughs> I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> no, it's all good. <clears throat> So, and you guys are doing the work with software partners to make sure the, the MPU gets utilized for these kind of use cases you're working with OBS and these, you know, the other yeah. folks. Yeah. So like one of the things about the MPU is, is, you know, our worldview is that the GPU is the performance case. Yeah. Like if you have something intense, if you want to get done quick, that's what the GPU is for. But we know as AI evolves and develops, there'll be like sort of long running or persistent AI stuff like assistance or uh, productivity, collaboration, teleconferencing, and those are like battery burn cases yeah. because they're just, they run forever. And you, in an old world, you fire up CPU cores to run that or GPU cores to run that. Now you can do it on the NPU and it's like two and a half to five times more power efficient, depending on what you're doing with it. So in this case, it's not a performance benefit for the NPU. It's a power benefit. It's like another way we're extracting more performance per watt out of this part. So in that in that case, is the low power island helping with little control or, or background if, if video, tasks? If it's video case or background threads, yes, it's okay. being prioritized to those cores. Right. Yeah. Got it. We can show another game if you want. Yeah. yeah. What Let's else run we, it, man. What else we got? Ah, some league. There we go. League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a really great case here. Um, Three-way, let me just like call it out. So you've got in the lower right, you've got last gen, right? A Raptor Lake part. And FPS is pretty good, 130, 140. Uh, losing by a hair to Ryzen. Okay, peace. But we're like nearly 200 frames a second on, on Coral Troy. Hmm. You know, like a solid 50, 80, 90 FPS more, right? And that's what we're talking about. like this is extremely playable yeah right? and again I'm not going to say these are gaming notebooks they're not gaming notebooks but you can play a game and we think that's pretty cool league of legends at 200 frames per second mm -hmm. not too shabby <laughs> yeah 1080p <laughs> max settings like I, I think about like <clears throat> honestly when we started talking all of us started talking like We've all been in this business 10, 15, 20 years, right? Yeah. This was unthinkable 
when yep. we started. Like getting a game running on a notebook like this was impossible. Yeah. Like this required desktop, big old, big old discrete card, and now we're here running it on a work laptop you can throw in your backpack. Yeah, like, yeah, it's amazing. Integrated graphics oh, got a bad God. rap. It did get a bad rap. <laughs> this <laughs> use case, you, if, if you were on a business notebook, I don't know how many years ago, I don't want to say how old I am, you couldn't even run the game. They would just crash. They would just crash. It would, Yeah, you, you couldn't even show the slideshow most of the That's time. Right. It just wouldn't work. And now we're like live streaming from one. We're playing games on it. We're like doing Twitch overlays. Like, holy crap, we've come a long way. Absolutely. <laughs> it's really cool. Good Absolutely. stuff for sure. Yeah, just the, th this whole stream is running from a 13 inch notebook, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Scary. Um, so, Mike, maybe we can just flash the slide here for a second. So, uh, you know, here we're live demoing configurations um, as shipped. So these are just out of the box mm -hmm. yep. uh, as shipped from the OEM. Uh, but here we also uh, had the lab prepare a really strict uh, comparison, right? So we try to get the power levels and the systems as comparable as possible. Uh, and we ran uh, a wide set of titles here, uh, mm -hmm. DX11, DX12. And you can kind of see how uh, the, the new Core Ultra Meteor Lake based chip stacks up against, uh, against the competition on a really wide swath of titles. Um, so, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't claim, of course, this is, you know, winning every single title. Of course, graphics is really, possible. really complicated and, and difficult and a lot goes into the driver stack. Mm -hmm. um, but we are super, super proud about what we've been able to achieve with the chip, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's really rebalanced from where we were in Alder Raptor, which was so CPU performance focused. And mm. I'm super proud of that too, by the way. Uh, but, you know, we're kind of rebalancing things and now addressing all the other IPs, power, graphics, AI. It's mm -hmm. really have a, a nice, well-rounded laptop chip. That's actually a really good way to think about it. Like Raptor, was, Raptor Alder were like all in on CPU performance. Yeah. But you need some help on graphics. Yep. You need some help on power. Yep. And and that's what Core Ultra fixes. Like that, you know, and, and increments a little more on CPU performance. Like it brings everything to even you get a nice well-rounded experience got it yeah got it can i go super nerdy for one second please Love you it. might not even be able to answer it but like if as we go to the <laughs> higher end meteor lakes that are paired with discrete mm -hmm. and you free up that power will you see better cpu perf on those versus that's a good question the other machines yeah, theoretically did. Mm -hmm. so like it, it's it's architected to take advantage of that extra power that's not being used it, it might yeah, lose longer etc it, it, dep it depends a bit how it's configured so uh in laptops that are uh, you know, thermally constrained and you want to really sort of optimize your cpu gpu in the box mm -hmm. so you maximize your power capability for the gpu you know it's a great chip for that mm -hmm. and so it's it's really built for those more constrained cases uh, we're keeping, for example, our HX class. Uh, we'll keep uh, with Raptor Lakes. So you get absolute top end frequencies, maximum peak performance when you're truly uh, far less power limited. And those are really, I would say, built for AC performance, right? They're built yeah. for the wire. Yeah. And they, you want to just have the maximum capability you can get in a portable notebook. Um, but yeah, so those those more you know portable form factors, kind of crossover cases. Mm -hmm. We're seeing some. You'll see at CES, I'm sure, like some really interesting designs where. Uh, folks are blurring the lines, you know, between a, a gaming laptop mm -hmm. and a more sort of prosumer consumer laptop. Yeah. You're like a, a nice choice for those. I, I, I don't know if I can say the vendor, uh, so I'm just going to describe the system. Uh, <laughs> I've seen uh, Core Ultra 9, uh, 45 wattish part with RTX 4070s in yeah. form factors kind of like this. We're talking highly, highly portable, uh, pretty pretty darn good experience. Like, cool. You know, it's it's not. Um, I, th I think I guess what I'm saying is there's a place in the world for thin line gaming, dyed in the wool, honest to god gaming systems, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good for that. So that's the six plus eight config, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you get cool. of course you get the benefits too, not just of uh, a little bit more on the CPU efficiency, but also you have a nice uh, integrated GPU that you can use, take advantage of in certain cases, mm -hmm. and the MPU, right, which is uh, another use case we were just demoing that could be done with a uh, discrete as well. Right. Cool. Cool, cool. We got any more questions we should fire I in there? I haven't been, looking, demo. I've been listening to the guys, but I think we have more demos and we have something else to well, show. The last demos is the AI one. Oh, yeah, we can do a little game show action. I think should we, we should. should. We should. Game show action. All right, all right. So what we got, uh, so as a as a, like, kind of a reflection of what Intel can do, <laughs> uh, we worked with gonna be fun. Uh, the guys who make GIMP, the open source image editor, Hopefully, people are familiar. And if you're not familiar, <clears throat> check it out. Really nice tool. Yep. Uh, we built plugins, AI plugins, to do stable diffusion entirely offline inside GIMP. So if you have an Intel Core Ultra CPU, you can now do stable diffusion, no internet connection, 
right inside this tool. It also has AI upscaling. You can do any X multiplier that you want. And as many of us know, that often costs money in the cloud <laughs> to do AI upscaling. Uh, so now you can do it right here in the PC. So what we're gonna do is you have a list of prompts. Yes. We have a list of prompts, <laughs> which I have right here. Can I read yours? No. Oh, why not? <laughs> and uh, we're gonna generate some images okay. locally on these machines, and then we're gonna try to guess don't what look. Your, what your prompt is. <laughs> oh, I can look at ours. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're we're on the okay. same team, yeah, bro. That's right, team. that's right, that's right. <laughs> we're, we're playing for points and all the hockey sticks. Team Chinzano, yeah. All right, all right. You're right. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Too so, competitive. Uh, why don't you guys go first? Let's. Uh, so I'm going to click generate, right, Mike? We're you ready to roll? Got your prompt you going to put it up here, Mike? Uh, I can put it up there. All right. All right. But I, I can't look yet because I'll see the prompt, right? Oh, you just let me know when it's oh, okay. yeah, that, that was incredibly fast. So I'm going to do it again. It's already done. Hang on a sec. We're going to do it again. That was too <laughs> yeah, quick. That, that's a yeah, I can't yeah because that kind of finished uh, much quicker than I thought here. So I'm going to switch my prompt, and we're going to do this one instead. Don't show it, Mike. Don't let him cheat. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to click generate mm -hmm. now. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not. When can I look? You can look. There it okay. is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so now we got to guess what the prompt was. What are these? These are... Look like penguin. Movies. We're PG thirteen uh, rated guys. By yeah, the way, too. yeah, nothing salty or anything like that. Uh, okay, penguins. <laughs> hot hardware in New York demoing <laughs> poker chips. Uh, <laughs> penguins gambling. Penguins playing cards. Cl close enough. Group of penguins playing, playing poker. poker. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, you got that one. All right, <laughs> we'll give it to you. I'll take that. Uh, all right, so let's see here. I'm gonna punch in. This is the brain. This is so nerdy. I love it. I know. So <laughs> it's the brainchild. Of, it's the brainchild of Mike Bartz. That's why it's nerdy. I mean, come on. I I love this. Our our guy off camera, Mike, has come up with this game show. All credit to him. This is genius. All right, I'm hitting generate. We ready? I ready won't. I won't cheat. All right. Yeah. I'm looking at you. I'm watching your screen. So okay. Right, oh. Here we go. So All we're right, gonna see it over here. Done. Right? Yes. That's an astronaut riding a horse riding on the moon. On the moon. Yeah. Yeah. He knew. Oh, so there we go. Six. All right, one and one. Uh, <laughs> Do they one. get harder, Mike? Uh, yeah. oh, come on. All there's right. no, there's no way you get this one. Impossible for you to get this Impossible. one. Impossible. Oh, that's a good one, actually. All right. Yeah. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Hold on one second. So, yes, yep. Stable diffusion plug-in in GIMP. All right, here yeah. we go. Rendering, clicking, generate now. Artwork on the fly. That's right. Quickly, I might add, like seconds. That is so funny. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I think he's in New York. It looks like he or she. Oh, I have your list. I have your list. Oh, no, you oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't look. Okay. Uh, <laughs> some real little Red Riding Hood vibe. Yeah, <laughs> right? Sure. This is like a cape. He's like riding a skateboard with a cape. What's this riding the skateboard with a cape? A, a I mean, squirrel? There you go. Nailed it. Right. Uh, I okay. mean. <laughs> All right. Does that count? Do I get that it was it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Even though you cheated, but it's okay. Even though Marco put the list up on the screen. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, so just just as Robert's gonna be doing this for the audience, right? So this is uh, this is GIMP uh, stable diffusion use case. Yep. This is built on top of our Open Vino software stack, and it's using the uh, Core Ultra GPU to Correct. do all of this uh, right. to do all of this local. So this GPU. This is all happening locally. Uh, you okay. can see it's really performant. Mm -hmm. um, so for uh, yeah, really creators, office workers, uh, mm -hmm. small business owners, right? This this is cool, right? You, you can do, uh, you know, I remember the days of like trying to find clip art or going to Google images yeah. and searching for things. Like this is really a, an amazing productivity tool yeah. uh, that will be, uh, we've been pretty ubiquitous here uh, in PCs. Well, yeah. I, I was actually talking to a colleague who had never seen this uh, and she was like, well, I want to buy art for my house. And I was like, what kind of art? And she's like, I don't know, cubism. Uh, warm colors, and I was just like, "Boom, cubism, warm, warm colors." colors. <laughs> and, and just yeah. she's like, "Actually, I like that." <laughs> it's like entirely offline, and she's gonna go pay money to do it. She could just do it here. It's even cool for us. Like if we need, if we need a hero image for an article, you yeah, know, it's you like, can do it. Do yeah. a core ultra chip with this in the background, mm -hmm. with this here, and boom, you have you know, and, and you're right. not gonna get sued by Cop somebody saying it's their it's copyright free. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing too, like the the way we built the plugin for GIMP, you can actually control the runtime. Uh, you can set the number of inference steps that the GPU is making. Do you want to show it on screen? I can set yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, let's start on screen. Oh, uh, first take a guess what that is. Yeah, yeah, let me look, let me look. That's a gaming computer with a lot of speakers and uh, I can't. What's on, what's on the display? Oh, uh, 
fire. Yeah. <laughs> With fire on it. See, display. that's t- that's taking me back to the Amiga days. It, it yeah. looks like a, an Amiga CD32 with the awesome speakers all around it with fire on well, the display. Like a <laughs> plug-in, like the speaker plug-in. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're, you're, you're so close. It's a gaming PC with fire, uh, uh, running a, a benchmark with fire uh, on the screen. What temperature do you think that have? Oh, I don't know. That's Very hot hardware. Oh, there it is. I mean, you just had to hit us over the head with that. I see what you did there. I will I will lead the horse to water on that one. Wow. <laughs> wow. Was, we should have figured that yeah, one out. Yeah, what we're doing. All right. So let's let's pull up this tool. So you're in you're in you hit layer in the app and you've got all these uh AI plugins that uh, were built by our team for uh for GIMP and uh style transfer is is like I want, I have this image and I want to make it look like the style of another image. Mm-hmm. You can do that with style transfer. Like AI will transpose the look and feel of image A or your prompt onto the look and feel of image B, right? So you could say, I would like my image to look like a Salvador Dali painting. You can do that. Um, then we've got uh, super resolution. You pick the upscale multiplier, 8X, 10X, whatever over the canvas size that you already have, mm. and it will just use the GPU to upscale that image in the same way that you would like pay for a cloud service to do an AI super resolution. Yep. The last one, Stable Diffusion here, um, when you click into it, um, we use Stable Diffusion 1.5 LCM, which is latency constrained model, and, and that sort of sets constraints on how long this thing runs to get you uh, a result quickly. Mm-hmm. And the number of inference steps tend to whatever that will determine how many versions of the image it generates before spitting out the final result. So you can control the runtime and the quality by setting the inference steps. So for here, we're all using 10, but you could theoretically get a much better, more realistic result by turning the inference steps up. Okay. And it's actually not much slower either to go from like 10 to 20 or whatever. So I think you guys are up. Why don't you set it to 20? On, on your system. I think that's yours that's up right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. For, so you, guys, you guys are up. Yeah, okay. put yours up to 20. I'm done. And then give us the next prompt here. It's actually not much slower. Did you? Did you okay, uh, I am going to click generate now. Okay, and we're we'll moving to, to 20 inference, inference steps. Yeah, we'll punch ours up to 20 as well. Yeah, it's only a couple seconds longer. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I, I want to point out as well, like, because of our software work, this happens. Nobody else can do this. Right, our software engineers made this happen locally on the PC for the first time. Got it. We're pretty proud of that. Very pretty cool. cool. So what do we got? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, I I don't think you're gonna get this one because it's not quite the vibe of the prompt. Maybe <laughs> really. You regenerate. Let me regenerate. Right. Close, really? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's regenerate. We'll regenerate. It, it's, we, we made it too right? complicated with the twenty. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know. Let's see what it does here. And, so, and by the way, these plugins open source so, under the Apache license. So oh, I guess I guess it's yeah, right. Like, you can modify it. No, no, I think it's. I, this is going to be really hard to guess. Yeah, but all right, it is. Uh, be be very literal with your guess. Classic right. oil painting of a dog. Very close. Let's see what this one looks like. Right. It's not. I, I, it's I don't a think good looking dog. Yeah, it's a good looking dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, yeah. It, it's supposed to be a grumpy looking dog, but, but they look so. You know, his dogs are so happy, it's impossible yeah, to make. It's look. true. <laughs> exactly. Not a lot of grumpy dogs. He looks yeah. kind of pained in the eyes, like he's gone through nine months of core ultra launch. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tired, smiling dog. Yes. Yeah, no, he's cute. Well, I, I, we didn't get it. That's a point for you guys. Gotcha. Well, right. you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna launch the same one again because I want people to see how how quickly yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that is yeah, yeah, actually yeah, yeah. going. So, so we have 20, 20 inferences. This is here. 20. Inf- we, the, the earlier ones we were doing 10. This is mm-hmm. 20. So if you can see this on screen, I'm clicking generate now. Mm-hmm. And this is real time, live, stable yes. diffusion. And bang, here's the image going to pop up. through it pretty fast. Yep. Oh, that one looks now. He looks yeah. pretty grumpy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I still wouldn't have gotten it. So I think you guys <laughs> he, he, looks, he looks genuinely pissed off. All right. <laughs> <I see. laughs> This, this can be run to with an excludes prompt, which is pretty cool. So you can you know, tell it what not to uh, uh, produce. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we have a way of actually like ganging up mm-hmm. uh, the GPU and the MPU to run it together. So we can run the excludes on the MPU, run the uh, 
uh, commit prompts on the on the GPU, and uh, you get a performance case. More more intense mm -hmm. case to run, obviously. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. That's another like. Uh, cool attribute of the open Dino software stack that we can do that uh, dual engine uh, execution. It's actually well. triple engine. It yeah. does yeah. like set up on, uh, if you do use that model, so like in the drop down, there's multiple AI models and stable diffusion 1.4 in that list. Uh, the text, like the setup of the work happens on CPU, the execution of the work happens on GPU, and the final compositing of the image happens on NPU. Okay, and you can use negative prompts, like Dan said, to really dial in in the image that you're looking for, uh, and that's all in in the plugin. So let's uh, we're not going to use that, but we'll do. Uh, let's see here. So we got to guess now. Yeah, you got to guess. Uh, well, why is that not working? Because I didn't click. There we go. By the way, can we expect these plugins for like Adobe or some other mainstream apps eventually? Yeah, uh, well, they're all taking on their own work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true too. We, yeah. We have a lot of tools available to developers. Yeah. Right? So we have our, our own open Vino stack, mm -hmm. which of course is we're proud of, is very performant. Uh, but we're working with all the uh, other industry mm -hmm. uh, uh, tools and, and suites as well. I think Robert can elaborate on some of those. Yeah. Like I, all the image editing tools, all the video editing tools, all the 3D modeling tools that generate textures or can do texturing, they're all going to take on like this and you know some of it might be an intel built plugin some of it might be an isb built plugin but if it runs on intel it's going to run through open vino or it's going to run through uh maybe windows ml mm -hmm. uh, direct ml uh and i guess the key is like it doesn't really matter with what engine or what framework or what model because we can do all of it like this is this is the real living proof of what we're working on so um we've got an image now we've got one coming back <laughs> um, you're gonna have to guess what this bad boy is when it pops up. Check there, or I think up here. Yeah, here we go. That is a rock star lizard. Yeah. Um, An iguana playing a guitar. Iguana playing a guitar. A, a dinosaur playing a guitar. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, it's uh, a lizard uh, playing a guitar solo. Okay. Hey, yeah. Nice, nice yeah. blue strat too. I'm gonna. Yeah, guess. that's pretty cool. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. And All we right. have a question in the chat about this. Is the stream going to be available after? Yes. So this stream, um, after we're done, it will be on all our social channels. So mm -hmm. YouTube, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, it's good. anywhere you find hot hardware, you'll find the stream. Mm -hmm. Amen. So with that, are we close to wrap? Or did you guys want to drop one or two more tidbits on the folks? Yeah, I think to, you know, like maybe one other uh, okay. AI feature, but actually for gaming, right? So Robert was saying we have some. Uh, oh, yeah some AI uh, uses in gaming as well. But I think one that's cool, if we could, Mike, if we can just throw it up. Um, we have, of course, uh, XCSS technology, right? It's coming with our, our ARC integration. And uh, we're really excited about the type of speed up. So here again, just kind of a test of, uh, of different of different titles. Um, but you can see uh, the native uh, rendering in the blue and then the, the, the AI based upscaling in the purple and the types of frame rates we're able to achieve with the architecture with that technology. Yeah. Nice. And, and we know that like XCSS runs on previous gen Raptor Lake parts as well, but like we're getting way more out of it yeah. on, on this architecture because of the power of the graphics engine. Like it, it is a real difference maker and, and technologies like XCSS are especially impactful in like power constrained low wattage scenarios like a laptop. It's killer. It's a great feature. And, and this would not be possible without all the discrete arc work that has been done at Intel. Like this is this feature exists because of that effort, and now we can take advantage of it. Right, right. Yeah, looking at some of the titles there, mm -hmm. you get some good ones. F one twenty three. What what other nuggets do we have? We got lots of goodness. <laughs> uh, talk about generative AI. We talk about superpower. <clears throat> talk about. Wait, we should talk about the most important thing. Yeah. When are when are people going to be able to buy them? Can we say that? <laughs> that might be announced tomorrow. Or we can, we're getting so, nods from the gallery. We're getting say, nods. Yes, tomorrow, right? Like you can buy it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, you love that. Like there have been lots of hardware announcements, both recently and over the past year. And you've had to wait quite a while to get your hands on it. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. Just in, in time in for late yeah. Christmas gifts. Uh, Holiday gifts. Me Meteor Lake Coral Ultra, not the first chip with an MPU. However, mm -hmm. we are definitely the first to bring this level of scale, both in the hardware and in the mm -hmm. software. So, and that we're going to kick it off tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so we're super proud of the pipeline, both hardware and software. And you'll hear a lot more about that as we go into CES. Excellent. Pat going to bring a bunch of them to, uh, to the shindig tomorrow and just hand them out. Like, 
<laughs> like Santa Claus. Like dollar bills. <laughs> I, can, I can see Pat doing it. No, I can't. You, you know. got an insult for it. You get an insult for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm under embargo, but I happened to meet with some partners yesterday and saw no less than 16 Meteor Lake notebooks yesterday. Yes. Two different form partners. factor sizes, everything. It's There's some really fun stuff coming. There's some really cool stuff coming. Yeah. Yes. Excellent, guys. I guess I guess that about wraps us. The hot hardware is no longer hot. We're done now. I mean, <laughs> this room didn't even heat room, up. Yeah, it's we, cool in we here. turned the AC down, so <laughs> it didn't get too hot, thankfully. But, uh, folks, we thank you so much for joining us today. We thank Robert and Dan. Thanks so much for your time and your the, and and Mike for uh, the gear and the uh, demos. And oh my God, Mike are off. Yeah, oh, yeah actually, you know what? The the, the, the the true hero. We brought cameras and microphones. And everything else was Mike. So thank Mike. you. He's the, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> he is the man behind like, no, the curtain. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> he is the wizard, the man behind the curtain. <laughs> and uh, with, with that, folks, we'll bid you adieu. You can find us on the web at hothardware.com, twitter.com slash hothardware. That's X, I guess, at this point. Facebook, YouTube, we're all over. Hit thumbs up and subscribe. Can I post something? Yeah, yes, go yeah. for it, man. Yeah, AI Everywhere event tomorrow, live stream. We're going to like officially launch this thing, announce it at retail. So intel newsroom check it out at the out. at the nasdaq can we say yeah, that well, yeah. well, we, we just said it it's we just did. It's, on <laughs> it, it, it's, it's on your slide already <laughs> i think yeah I think, I think we're good we're in trouble already <laughs> and uh, everybody until then thanks so much for stopping by thanks y'all thank you